There are three things that can get you into trouble at the average party when you're talking about them. Politics, religion, and padding techniques. Padding is essentially one of those skills which is very fundamental to anyone working on woodwind instruments. It seems at first blush quite simple, but in fact to do it well is anything but simple. So we've spent years researching all different kinds of pads and using all different kinds of pads. We've worked in cork, we've worked in bladder, we've worked in multiple bladder skins, we've worked in synthetic pads, neoprene pads, cork pads, pads which are of leather, uh, different kinds, kangaroo, goat skin, lamb skin, uh, cow skin. I feel guilty for all of the animals that have been affected. And over the years in doing all of these, we've come down to our preference, and this is a preference because not everyone will have the same one, of using primarily synthetic pads. And we do it for a number of reasons. Number one, when properly put in, they seal beautifully. When properly put in, they last a very, very long time. Finding leaks on them is very easy. And they're completely consistent, so they don't have the vagaries of a piece of leather where one piece has different porosity than, than another one. But what we found is a lot of people have misconceptions about synthetic pads because their experience has either been limited to stick and press synthetic pads or synthetic pads that are not put in well. So I'm going to try and give you just a couple of helpful hints based on what we found over time. First of all, there are different synthetic pads made by different makers. The ones we use at this point in Bakun uh, are Valentino. And the Valentinos typically come in two versions. One of them, the white back one, which is called the Masters. The other is the green back. Now these are available in black or white. And we use black for a couple of reasons. Number one, they stay clean and they look great almost indefinitely. So particularly if it's an instrument that requires periodic cleaning, whether it's a rental instrument or uh, school-owned instruments, the next person who's getting it, uh, it looks pretty much like it did the day it was put in when properly looked after. But the second one is a really simple practical consideration. You're a band teacher. It's five minutes before the concert. Your clarinet player comes up to you and says, my clarinet's not playing. And you're looking madly. It's very hard to see what it may be. You literally can take a flashlight and put it in the bell. And there's a flashlight almost anywhere. And when you're pressing on the keys against the black pad, you will very clearly see a line of light. It will tell you exactly where to focus your efforts. With a white pad, the light is less obvious. So from a practical consideration, it just makes it easier for you to find what's causing the problem in the first place. So we like them for that. Biggest problem which I find with synthetic pads is the technique which people use to put them in. You know, when we learn to repair, someone has told us, or the school we've gone to, that you have to do it a certain way. And so, historically, people said we had to use shellac. This is available in any number of colors, clear, white, black. I used red because it looks good for the camera and it's kind of cool. Um, essentially, most of it was meant as a sealing wax on envelopes for a long time. So the idea is you heat it and you then drip it into the cup or the back of the pad, depending which technique, put the two together, heat them, do a little bit of magic with your pad slick under the key with heat, ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. Whoops, let me do this. You adjust the pad, check it, it should be fine. Shellac has some nice qualities, it's easily available, you can get it in matching colors, but one of its significant fallbacks, in my opinion, is it becomes brittle over time. So when you least expect it and least want it to, as it becomes brittle, a pad will fall out of a pad cup. Inevitably, two bars before your big solo, right before your audition, or at the very time you're trying to impress your in-laws. So for that reason, while it's a very good substance, for me, mm, not my number one pick. That's the other one is it breaks. Number two is a wax-based material 
which is similar to shellac. I find with this, when you heat it, that manipulating the pad to get the perfect position is a little bit challenging. The other problem is if it drips over the edge of the cup when you put it in, I think you need dynamite to take it off. So cleaning up the work afterwards just takes longer than it otherwise might. Uh, on larger pads, the time bass clarinet, I'll use it. Uh, it is very sticky and unlike shellac, have not had the same problem with it falling out. Third version is frequently available from some of the musical instrument suppliers. And this is flexible, it bends but it's a very high heat glue. So I find that by the time you make this melt and you put the pad in, that the pad, instead of staying straight, starts literally warping because of the excess heat. So from that point of view, not my choice. The other thing is you get these strong strings which come over the edge of the cup and you're spending forever after you change a pad trying to clean it up. The next, hot melt glue. Very common, easily available from uh, hobby shops. A number of manufacturers are using it. In my view, the absolute worst thing that you can use. It's really fast to use as a manufacturer, incredibly cheap, but it has too many drawbacks. One of them is that the float time when you're using it is too long. I find that after a brief period, whether it's weeks or months, it starts to basically move slightly, it's shrinking. And so the pad which was seating perfectly is now not seating perfectly. Um, and after a few months or six months or a year when you try and refloat it and adjust the pad when you're doing routine maintenance, this is just user hostile in my view. Sorry to say it, but it's out of here. My choice for the winner, drum roll. No drum. Okay, I like pelletized glue. You may say, why? First of all, it's the only one of the methods we talked about where you can get basically a controlled amount. So in a small cup, you can choose to use one pellet, or you can choose two pellets if you need it to be thicker, or in a bigger one, four pellets. The other beauty, as you melt this into the cup, there's no big piece going over the side. So if you do it properly, there's virtually no cleanup required. You simply take it, put it into a pad cup, use a heater. So in this case, this is a hot air torch. Heat it, melt the glue, put the pad in, and you are done. This is available from different musical instrument suppliers. There are a couple of different sizes, and you'll notice when you look at it that there's some variation within. So sometimes you may say, oh, I'll use two small ones, or I'll use one big one, or three, and you get used to the the slight inconsistencies. But on the whole, when it melts, it forms a beautiful, clean, flat bed. You just drop the pad in, put it on the instrument, and then do whatever small manipulation you need. The other beauty of this is I found that when I work on instruments a year later, two years later, three years later, that remelting it to be able to move it for a key that's been slightly bent, wood that's moved a bit, or play or feel, is a very, very easy thing. And it's a low enough temperature that it melts well below the temperature of the actual um, pad itself. One trick which I would recommend to you is that whatever you use as a heating device, the size of the heater not be much bigger than the pad cup itself. So here you can see that would be just fine. So you only want to use enough heat to gently melt the glue. Biggest mistake which I see with people padding clarinets is too much heat used which distorts the pads and then over time as it cools down the pad shifts slightly so you get a leak in the back or a leak in the front depending on what the uh, application was that you used. Mastering padding is one of the most important aspects of learning to repair wind instruments well. It takes time and the development of a certain touch and sometimes those of us who have done this a long time talk about younger technicians as whether or not they have the touch. And the touch generally means the ability to feel the difference that you will have with different pads. Many of your clients may come in with their own preferences. I always advocate listening to them and in many cases 
if someone has a specific preference, they want cork in the top or they want leather, we're happy to oblige, but we want to make sure that they understand each style of pad, the advantages, the disadvantages, so they can make the most informed decision possible. Good luck with your padding.